Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Monday, October 17th, around noontime, mountain time, 2022. The seismic swarm or crisis on Iceland continues, and it continues to shift from one region to the next. But the big story, extreme temperature anomaly scrambles North American weather patterns. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, what is going on with the scrambling? Take a look at this. Extreme temperature anomalies up here in the northwest while it is cold in the southeast. Well, if you watch the channel, you know that that is the meridional flow. There are two types of flow. You can get a zonal flow, which is a more powerful jet straight across, or you can get the meridional flow where you can literally be bringing warmth from the equator all the way up into the Arctic and the opposite, Arctic air all the way down towards the equator. And that's exactly what's happening here in this pattern, right here, west to east, where you can see the split. This is the temperature anomaly versus average for the next five days in Northern Hemisphere or North America. And you can see the East Coast is going to be much colder 13 degrees colder than normal, while the West is going to be 13 degrees warmer. Now, what's going on there? Well, as our magnetosphere wanes, this is what occurs. The breakdown of the jet stream into meridional flow. Every corner of North America is getting impacted by this historic pattern. If you're in the Southeast, it's very cold. If you're in the Northwest, it's abnormally hot. And even in the Northeast, and it's going to be bringing some incredibly early frost to parts of the south. Watch this freezing line. It's all the way up in the Northwest Territories, but it's all the way down to the Gulf states. We only have 10 states and three provinces that aren't going to be dropping below freezing Monday night and Tuesday night. And look at some of these abnormalities compared to seasonal. By Monday night, Mobile, Alabama, and Hay Holy River, macaroni. Northwest Territories will be dropping to the same temperature while parts of the Dakotas will be nearing 20 degrees below where they should be. In Toronto, you are right in the middle of it. And in terms of our pattern moving forward, this big upper level low that's responsible for pulling all that. Now take a look at the, de the depth of the meridional flow here. It is absolutely mind boggling. That cold air south, it's gonna be balancing out with the western ridge and we're going to get more of a zonal flow so the jet stream is going perfectly west to east and that will be bringing everyone back towards reality. Yeah and it will also be bringing extreme moisture to the northwest and much needed and we'll get to those models in just a second. Take a look at those frost and freeze warnings all the way down to the Gulf states all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Take a look at that. Bring your sensitive plants in, harvest your last crops. It is going to be a hard freeze in dozens of states. Much below normal temperatures with morning frost freeze conditions are expected for much of the eastern U.S. behind a strong cold front for the first half of the week. The northwest will remain warmer than normal over the next few days thanks to the continued presence of the upper level high pressure system and that meridional flow we just showed you. There might be some record temperatures up in the northwest and there will certainly be records being broken all over the southeast. Now at the same time, Washington state wildfires burning out of control, forcing thousands to evacuate. We had issued some fire weather warnings the last few days uh, in the Pacific Northwest. And in fact, the Nakia Creek fire ignited near Vancouver, Washington is being fueled by these warmer temperatures, but that is going to come to an end at the end of the week and will quelch this fire. But in the meantime, uh, by Sunday night, residents of more than 2,900 homes were issued a level three go now notice telling them to evacuate according to the Clark Regional Emergency Services Agency. Another 5,017 homes were under level two beset notices urging residents there to be ready for evacuation. So heads up, uh, good news is that moisture is coming into the picture right there starting this weekend on Saturday and that will put an end to the fires. But in the meantime, we have some moisture moving through South Texas today, and that will be the end of that as this winter storm bombs out here in the Northeast, moves up into Eastern Canada. It will be dry across the U.S. for much of the midweek here, 
at the end of the week and the beginning of the weekend, we have a huge system coming in to the Pacific Northwest. We have 138 hours of snow totals up. And we can move them through. There's that system up in Michigan and Wisconsin going to bring, bring some snow through Wednesday, as well as Ohio, Indiana, western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and western New York. And then the snow comes into the Pacific Northwest in a big way, starting in British Columbia Friday into Saturday into Washington State, Idaho, western Montana, and dropping down into the lower Rockies. So it appears as if global warming goodness and old man winter are arriving in mid-October. Shut up, Al! He's just upset because his company is tanking. Now more than 600 killed in Nigeria's worst flooding in a decade. Cosmic rays on the increase. Some of the highest cosmic ray levels for decades. Now, albeit we are at solar max, so the cosmic ray levels are dropping slightly, but the flooding continues worldwide. Seismic update. We just had a boomer knocking off here in Idaho, 3.3 in Stanley. Pretty normal activity up there. Hawaii is also rocking. The most recent quake there, 3.1 in Napupu. Who knew? A couple of five magnitudes kicking off. We do have some major activity happening off the coast of Iceland, 4.5 here at the Reykjanes Ridge. We'll go into that in more detail in a minute. But first, quakes and bombs. When Hawaii's Mauna Loa, the world's largest volcano, erupted. Now, this volcano usually erupts every five or six years, but things have been changing, and it hasn't erupted in since 1984. So, how will we know it's going to erupt? Well, as a comparison... There were hundreds of earthquakes per day sustained for weeks prior to Mauna Loa's eruption in 1984. And earthquakes reached more than 1,000 per day prior to the 1975 eruption. So today's pattern is nowhere close to that, but it is increasing, and we will have warning. Now, what are the threats? Well, Mauna Loa is known for its voluminous flows. The volcano's gigantic size and large interior chamber, which has been accumulating magma now for decades, means it could have more dangerous and potentially more damaging flow than we're used to seeing from Kilauea. Now, the amount of lava that Mauna Loa can produce over a period of time can exceed the amount of lava that Kilauea produces in the same period of time by as much as a factor of three. And what are the threats? Well... Poor air quality for the residents of the Big Island, haze and smoke, and potentially dangerous lays, as well as destroyed roads. And there is a major threat to Hilo. Hilo is the largest city on the Big Island, and its population has grown to 44,186 per the 2020 census. The city has been threatened by Mauna Loa's lava flows in the past and has every reason to worry about them in the future. So heads up, Heloans, if that is in fact what you're called. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Normal volcanic activity here on the list. Suanosima, Sabancaya, Nevado de Chilan, Sangay. Stromboli putting on a fantastic show here. Violent spattering up to 100 meters high from the most recent October 15th event two days ago with some fantastic filters apparently now strong earthquake swarm on the Reykjanes Ridge we just showed you that 4.5 probably in one of these green star clusters and that quake happened over 24 hours ago now but the activity has moved north into the Tiernus fracture zone Uh, let's click on the small scale hopefully that gives us the resolution there it is off the shore there that is where most of the new activity is now happening up in the Tiernus fracture zone but overall we still have activity at Astia. we have activity now current new activity at Grimsvolten as well as what the heck is this uh okay Kafla jeez so we are on alert for potential upticks in multiple volcanic areas all across Iceland and here we can see the micro tremor from Grimsvolten that recently had a joculip, and then some micro tremor increased, and here in the last few hours, it's dropping off a little, but it's leveling out, so Grimm's Voten might be gearing up here. We'll keep a close eye on that for you. As we move over to space weather, oh, we have some activity increasing here on the sun after it's been quite quiet for a while. This activity is probably happening over at the limb because 
Well, the sun is spotless, basically. So almost no threats on the disk. As we approach solar maximum, very low sunspot activity. And that's why this, in the solar cycle comparison here, this is the latest solar cycle, cycle 25, is now curving, trending lower and mimicking 24. Now, 23 experts in the field of solar physics and climate science contradict the IPCC and say that the science is not settled. And this is a diverse expert panel of global scientists, and they find that blaming climate change mostly on greenhouse gas emissions is, well, premature to say the least. And you can see Willie Soon's name is on the list on this paper coming out last year. And now we're going to provide it for you. The full text it is quite, quite long. But how much has the sun influenced the northern hemisphere temperature trends? An ongoing debate. Check it out. Now, some interesting and disturbing news. Radioactive waste found at Missouri Elementary School. This is very heartbreaking. Levels of the radioactive isotope lead-210, polonium, radium, and other toxins were in far in excess of what Boston Chemical had expected. That is the group that uh, did the testing and the sampling. And the dust samples were taken inside the school were found to be contaminated. Children have been breathing this for, well, since it was in place. This is all due to some toxic waste nightmare created here by multinational corporations. Now, the school sits in the floodplain of Coldwater Creek, which was contaminated by nuclear waste from weapons production during World War II. The waste was dumped at sites near St. Louis Lambert International Airport next to the creek that flows to the Missouri River. The Corps has been cleaning up the creek for more than 20 years. So, and now more contamination located near an elementary school and in the school. As breaking news, vaccines to treat cancer will be possible by 2030, according to the multinational corporations that want you dead. And look at this, it's not to beat cancer, it's to treat cancer. Isn't that a treat? And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Be a hero and share this video. Or support the work we do and become a Patreon. We love you. Be safe. And that's a boom.